Hello, and welcome to the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation course on Managed Workspaces. This is the first part of a four part series about what might go wrong. In this first part, we will discuss types of error messages, specifically the standard error message types. So, this lesson will present an overview of what might go wrong. In other words, troubleshooting. In this part of the lesson, we will specifically discuss standard error and alert messages. The learning objectives of this part are to get you more familiar with the types of error and alert messages that you might encounter, as well as give you some ideas on how to diagnose each type. We will discuss three types of error messages. The first will be error 222 messages. We will then look at no workspace, no work set messages. Then we will look at error opening file messages. Let's start with error 222 messages. This could be a syntax error. It could be an intentional verification message, which would be in the case of something like a proactive error checking. Or it could be something like insufficient information. We can see examples of these two types here. So let's start with invalid syntax. First thing you'll want to do is read the message very carefully. There's a line in here that says, check your program association. That's probably not correct. But what you will see is the message that says, fail to generate managed workspace configuration file. That is valid. We then want to see what the message is following that. In this case, it says invalid expression. Pay close attention to this part of the message. Look specifically at the file indicated and the line number indicating where the expression occurred. This becomes valuable information in diagnosing this particular error. In this case, we have a message that says, look in the example redirection CFG file at line 44. So if we look at this file, we'll see this message. I've indicated the line numbers in this file. And if we look specifically at line 44, we see an if statement with no parameters behind it. So this is an invalid expression. And if this was the case in any of your configuration files, you would get the message shown above. So let's take a look at a demonstration of this. What we'll do to demonstrate this is open the workspace config file. We'll add the invalid syntax as, as we indicated. We'll open the file and capture the error message to the clipboard. Let's demonstrate that now. Let's open the example redirection CFG file. Go down to the work sets root variable. Let's comment those out for now. And let's add some invalid syntax here, like we showed earlier. We'll add a percent if statement. Doesn't really matter what line. We'll capture that in the message on the clipboard later. So now that we've got the file edited and checked in, let's open our file. And we see our error 222 message. One thing you can do with this error message is you can right click and copy this to the clipboard. You can then open a text document and paste that error message into the document. This will make troubleshooting the message much easier rather than just simply doing a screen capture of the message. You can see that we can see the line number here and we can see the file that it's looking for. We simply click OK to the error message to get out of it. We can then go back into the example redirection CFG file, find 
line 44 in the notepad document and see that, yes, that was indeed our syntax. Let's now clean that up, save this file, recomment these lines back in, and let's save the file. Let's next look at the no work set alert. This usually means that it cannot find the workspace or work set CFG. When it does this, it actually changes the USTN workspace name to no workspace and changes the work set name to no work set. This can be very difficult to troubleshoot because of this. But as we will see later, you can use validation messages to check this before it gets to this point. But let's kind of look at the anatomy of why this occurs. So as it's going through the MS config file, it first looks to see if a workset CFG file is defined. It then looks, and if that is not defined, it will automatically change that to a no work set CFG file and look at that. It will also at that point change your workspace name to no workspace as well, even if that has a valid workspace name. It will then go and include the work set CFG file. Now, if it did not find one, the included work set CFG file is the no work set. CFG file. So what are the troubleshooting steps? The first thing you'll want to do is select the open file option so that you can go in and analyze the variables. So you will want to check the workspaces route, see where that's at. You will then look in the workspaces route indicated by that variable, look in ProjectWise Explorer and make sure that there is a workspace name in that directory that you expect. You will then look at the variable work sets root and then check in ProjectWise Explorer to make sure that that name exists as well. So as we mentioned earlier, there's an advanced troubleshooting step which we will create a CFG file which verifies all of these paths prior to it opening the file. So you will not have to go through this, these troubleshooting steps. So let's look at a demonstration of this. First thing we'll do is rename a workspace CFG file to an invalid name. We'll open the file and I'll show you some steps that I typically do to analyze the variables. Let's look at that now. As a reminder of our current environment, we have our resources folder, our CAD resources folder, the configuration folder underneath that. We then have workspaces. As a workspace under that, we have example redirection. We have then our work sets folder and the metro station work set underneath that. Let's then go look at ProjectWise Administrator. We're using the minimum connect configuration that we created earlier. In that configuration, we are pointing to the configuration folder, so indicated, using the workspace name, example redirection, and work set name, Metro Station. We're going to rename example redirection by placing an X in front of the name to make it invalid. We will then open a file. We are now prompted with the no work set alert. Let's click open as we indicated earlier so that we can check our variables. 
we see that the icon in the lower right indicates that there is no active work set. So let's actually go into settings, configuration, configuration variables, and check a few variables. First variables we will check will be our workspace variables. So I type in workspace. Then I check workspace is root, that looks valid. I then check name, and that shows that there is no name. Nor does there happen to be a workspace CFG file defined, nor workspace root. I click OK to that, seeing that that is all invalid. Let's click exit out of that. Now, I know that my workspace name is different. As we indicated that we should go back in and check the workspaces root for a valid workspace name. And we indeed see that this is not the valid name. Let's talk about a couple of variables which are unique to the ProjectWise environment. These are USTN Workspaces List and USTN Worksets List. These were introduced for performance reasons, specifically so that ProjectWise does not need to create all the DGNWS files in the Worksets root folder. This was introduced in a 03.3x build. These variables directly equate to the USTN workspace CFG and USTN workset CFG variables. With that background, let's look at the error opening file message. This message is directly related to the resolution of those two variables. If those variables are not assigned correctly, you may get the error opening file message. So this is similar to the no workspace, no workset message in that it does not find a workspace and workset CFG file and therefore does not then assign those two variables correctly. So the troubleshooting of this message is to make sure that your workset and your workspace CFG resolve correctly. If after checking this and your problem is still not resolved, you may actually need to call Bentley support on this issue. So in summary of the learning objectives for part one, we reviewed the different types of error messages and we presented ideas on how to diagnose each type. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.